My name is Gergana Nikolova, and I am one of the shop floor midwives at Wexham Park Hospital. Now, I had a little video uh, ready for you to, to see, but unfortunately that technology is not with me today. So I will start with a little example instead of the video you have to see. Before I introduce you to the project, before I say anything else, I will try to take you with me in one of my antenatal appointments. Now, imagine you are in the room with me and I am the midwife who is seeing a lady for first time. I'm sure there are quite a lot of midwives in the room and quite a lot of students, I hope, students, midwives in the room. Um, so, it was a real thing a couple of years ago Please do come. I was seeing a lady, um, an Asian lady, uh, for first appointment. Um, I welcomed her in, took the notes, and I started asking her questions. Obviously, at that particular time, I was uh, busy to introduce myself, to say what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and I started asking questions. And then, in some point, I um, realized that the lady sitting in front of me actually had her face blank. And I said, do you understand what I'm talking? And she nods and I carried on. And then suddenly I decided to ask her um, how was her day today? And then she, she carried on nodding. <laughs> and you, you then get hit by a train. Actually, I am a midwife. I am here. I want to provide you with care. But you can't understand what I'm talking about. You, you don't know what I'm talking about. And ever since, I started thinking what we can do or how we can actually, yes, provide the care, but make the mothers and their families aware of what we can provide or what we want to provide. Uh, and now I, I want to say once again, I'm really glad that I'm here today for two simple reasons. First of all, seminars and conferences like this is a very good source to share anything new you, you have done or anything new you want to do. And second, because I believe some of the best leaders to be and changing our maternity services in the future are sitting here today before me. So thank you for coming, all the students and all of my colleagues and everybody who is outside of the midwifery. When I start my career, um, my children probably will say uh, it was in the uh, era of the dinosaurs, it wasn't that long time ago, but I was living in a very, very small country. We all were talking the same language, we all had the same religion, and we all had the same culture. Believe it or not, then the, inter the internet was only in its infancy. Now, today, my patients are talking at least 20 different languages. They exercise different religions, and they do have different cultures. <coughs> And at least one of you, I'm sure, talking about technology, is either texting or tweeting right now. So, here we go. The world is changing, fortunately or unfortunately. And we, did, we have to change and we have to find new ways to provide care and new, way, new ways to actually see our patients. That gives me the opportunity to introduce to you and to everybody who is watching us live today to our project, online antenatal and postnatal information designed to promote safe and effective maternity care for black, Asian and ethnic minority groups. Now, the NHS model of care involves three main components early assessment uh, of risk and plan for care, 
continuous flow of information and uh, clinical support and supplement care. Easy set and done for us who speak English, who have been here in, in this country, who have been navigated through the NHS system, or for us, the clinicians. I want you to stop thinking what I'm, that I'm, I'm here today, now, and answer my question. How many of you have you been promoted in the job currently or have changed jobs? Well done, thank you. How many of you had a manual with explicit instructions how to do the job, what to do, when? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, imagine, imagine that you are changing job, you're changing career, uh, or um, our future colleagues are coming to the unit, and you've been given uh, an instruction guide with everything you need to do. How, when, what, who to contact. And you are so glad and you are happy and you open the guide and you suddenly realize that it's in Chinese. Exactly. Um, this is how we have to think about patients coming to us with either limited English or not English at all. Now, we are expecting women with no previous experience in motherhood. We are ex we're expecting women with no understanding of our NHS system uh, to take this life-changing and lifelong responsibility without fear, and I'm afraid, with no guidance at all. So why we are here? We are here to provide them with the guidance. We are here to provide them with a manual of what to expect or what to do, at least at the beginning of the pregnancy. Now, going back to a few speakers before me, I have to say I am really proud that I am part of one of the best maternity services in the world. On the same time, I am a foreigner. And I have experienced myself the difficulties going through the NHS system and what needs to be done at what time. On the other hand, I am a midwife and I know the fr frustration of our colleagues on the shop floor trying to provide care, the best possible care to all the mothers. And sometimes you're stuck because you either don't understand the patient's views of uh, different um, tests or um, plan for care, or you can't provide it the way you want to. The reason I delivered, uh, the, developed the project was exactly because I understand both sides. The online antenatal and postnatal information model my team and I have uh, designed is neither perfect nor complete. It is, however, the beginning of the development of navigation system for foreign-born mothers and their families. The program is aiming to address some of the associated challenges by looking at new ways of providing timely, adequate and evidence-based information to mothers who not necessarily understand our maternity services. The project intention is to adapt and provide information about all aspects of antenatal and postnatal care, developing educational evidence-based materials that are accessible to BME mothers will not only increase the knowledge of the women themselves, but also will encourage them to use, to make the use of those services better. Every year, the maternity services um, in England and Wales are providing care to more and more mothers born outside the United Kingdom. And we can't avoid the fact we have to work for it. Since 2003, the number of live births to non-UK born mothers is steadily increasing. And I promise I'm not talking about Brexit. I'm not talking about changing 
or I'm not talking American politics. Those are the facts. The need for an improved antenatal care plan for women uh, or black and Asian minority ethnic groups have been highlighted in many different documentations and UK government policies. It was highlighted that communication, timely and adequate provision of information and cultural sensitivities in care are key factors affecting access and uptake of antenatal care by women who don't speak English as their first language. On the other hand, considering that providing maternity care should be a joint process, the support of our antena online antenatal program provides support not only to midwives, but all of the rest of the colleagues who are working with the mothers. And now, let's talk about some of the challenges um, with providing care to black and Asian minority ethnic groups. Again and again, late access to antenatal care, which I'm sure everybody who is exercising the midwifery profession will know how important it is. Inconsistent attendance to antenatal appointments and postnatal appointments. Language barrier, again, cultural barrier, but let's not forget uh, the influence um, the family will have on mum uh, and young family in general, mum to be or dad to be. So we chose in the online form because um, there is no doubt that the internet is perhaps the most used at the moment source for information uh, and to put uh, an information on and we voiced over the videos um, because originally they were filmed in English, purely because many evidence has shown that uh, written information is not all, always the best source of information when we talk about people with no, uh, mothers in general who don't speak English as their first language. NHS, again, the principles of diversity and quality of care for all women is still fundamental principle of the NHS vision and values. Uh, but again, nobody will say that uh, the services are still the same. Whether we need to change the NHS, I have no answer, definitive answer to that. But I know that we have to change the way we work and the way we approach our patients. And let's start. Shortage of midwives. Again, who says that the midwives are um, uh, in sh short? Well, we all know. We all know that we, we are short, uh, not only to provide care, but to support each other as well. <coughs> Increasing pregnant women uh, with associated health, care, uh, health problems. Is there any day we don't talk about diet, obesity, um, diabetes, or the state of our uh, mental health services. And that does affect our mothers as well as our colleagues. Public expectations. Increased demand for additional antenatal appointments. Of course, if we're looking after mothers who will have um, high-risk antenatal care, we will definitely need more antenatal appointments. Hence we will need more hands on board. Increase of numbers uh, of um, general popula population and mothers who are giving birth are their 35s and above. Advancing technology, it is a good thing, uh, but not necessarily always and not necessary for everything. Integration and support. It gives us uh, the opportunity to actually promote our services to the mothers in the way they want us to promote our services. Now, shall I click the button, shall I not? Um, budget. Restricted already budget. Budget will be restricted. Did I mention budget? <coughs> Everybody is talking about money. <coughs> However, we can provide better care with either the same amount of money or with less money. It is about how we provide care, what we use to provide care, and when. 
Providing equality diversity services uh, has always been a paramount uh, for, for the trust I work for uh, because half of our, uh, our population is of Asian and minority background. Many times we have discussed that some of the communities are still isolated and we have to reach. But again, you can provide care to people who understand what the care means and they have the same expectations. Because my expectation of maternity services is definitely going to be different to my Russian lady of maternity, maternity services or of my Polish lady or of my Indian lady. So we have to actually explain what the expectations are and what we want to provide. Because once again, don't forget, we moan all the time, but we do have one of the best maternity services in the world, I can reassure you. Antenatal education has been um, very important for our maternity services and has been an um, in invaluable part of, uh, of it. However, with the complexity and dynamics of a diverse yet technology-savvy and equipped population, the traditional antenatal education is struggling at the moment. A way um, to, to move away from didactic teaching methods is probably just about time. When we talk about best practices, evidence-based care and equal opportunities, perhaps the most important factor is to make sure that the clientele we are providing services for actually understand and want to take the care. Conflicting or limited information uh, and an unavail ability to um, express concerns or ask questions is often resulting in lack of engagement uh, with the maternity services and the midwives themselves. Studies have also shown that patients are much more likely to accept and follow information provided in their own language. Of course, we can't expect midwives to, to speak many different languages. But if on a click of a button you have um, information about syndrome down, for example, uh, and you don't necessarily speak um, Russian, then it's probably a good idea by the time you uh, talk about other different things or you do your paperwork to put the video um, for the patient and then obtain consent. But that consent, you will know it's evidence-based and the woman understood what you were talking about. Lack of appropriate evidence-based information can result of uh, women of uh, black and ethnic minority uh, groups to completely disengage or avoid the services. In 1970, approximately 12% of all mothers who gave birth in England and Wales were born outside the United Kingdom. 12%. Last year, the Office for National Statistics reported that almost 30% of our women we are looking after, are born outside the United Kingdom. Why is this important? Women's expectations of childbirth and understanding of childbirth are inevitably influenced by their previous experiences, cultural and religious beliefs, as well as their own expectations and values. We provide care to all those women. And this is why we need to start thinking of how best we can provide information and antenatal education to them. And again, if you ask me why this is important, it's a very simple answer. We provide care today, but we are actually building up the future we are building up society which is going to come back to us in 10, 20 years when the children we are delivering today will start delivering themselves. So yes, 
We are providing care today, but that will be seen very soon in the very near future. In the era of the internet and social media, increased migration, multiculturalism, and polyglotal population, providing a universal model of antenatal care is more and more challenging. Our project is all about start. Start thinking differently, start providing antenatal and postnatal education to more and more <coughs> mothers and equip them for something which we, we do understand and we do know, but they ne don't necessarily. I want to say thank you for putting up with my Eastern European um, accent. You've been very patient. And I want to say that if you do have an idea, don't hesitate. There's always somebody to listen and somebody to support. And in this on mine, I want just to say thank you to my trust, Frimley Health, the Department of Health, and um, also the Mary Seacle Scholarship. Without them, that project wouldn't be possible. We have a couple of minutes for questions. Gagana, I want to thank you very much for that wonderful presentation and all the efforts that you're putting into thank you. improving the lot of women of minority ethnic backgrounds. Thank you. It's so my, <laughs> I think, you know, it's, it's really great what you're doing. It's very, very needed. Because when we look at the statistics that have been produced, and I've been observing them since 2002, the lot of women from BME backgrounds have been very little improved. Despite we are a first world country here in the UK. So I just want to say that my name is Elsie Gale. I'm a practicing midwife. I've worked on three continents and Me I was too. trained here. Okay, <laughs> so I have a vast experience of maternity care in different locations. I was really fortunate last night to have been asked, okay, it was a last minute ask, to address a university uh, meeting, a forum, on the topic of misogynoir. So for those of you who don't understand or know what misogynoir is, it is hatred of black women. And it was convened or coined by an academic, a queer academic, uh, an academic who describes herself as queer to talk about specific language so that she could find a solution to the things that she was encountering in her work mm -hmm. life. So a hatred and a mistreatment because you're a black woman. My focus in my work life is about improving the lot of the most disadvantaged women. And as a woman of African descent, I'm very conscious that we continue to sit at the bottom of outcomes. We don't, we don't anymore. No, no, no. Black African women, according to the last statistics that were produced from Embrace, we have the highest mortality rates. Yes, unfortunately. Our babies right. are 50% more likely to die mm -hmm. a stillbirth, mm -hmm. a perinatal yes. death. So that is my concern as a person of African descent. And I've been observing these figures since 2002. <coughs> Now, colleagues and myself who are really conscious, so we, some of us are lecturers, some of us are supervisors of midwives, okay, supervision is going out in its current form. We have gathered together to set up a group called the Society of African and Caribbean Midwives. And we have been meeting with people at the Royal College of Midwives and other bodies to raise these concerns. But I have to say, Although there is concern, and I don't know how the situation here is in this audience, because there's quite a few people of African descent, whether in fact misogynoir is playing a part here. Why is it 
in a first world country, we cannot improve the lot of the least. Well, it is going to be very difficult for me to answer the question why, but um, what is the most important um, and perhaps the biggest problem we are trying to tackle with our antenatal educational program, by the way, that's the link and you can, um, you can use it later on, uh, is to actually bring the ladies, bring the mothers as soon as possible, as early as possible. So we can, con we, we can establish contact, we can discuss, the, we can explain to them why we are there. And then hopefully that will, that will make the difference, that will make the change. Okay, so then just the last thing, because I don't want to hog the floor. But the topic is really quite important. It's really important to me because one of my children was damaged as a result of ne racist negligence, I think. That is my opinion, personally. However, wh what I want to ask you is that you actually, because this, the, 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 the issues are really deep. They need yes. looking at, and people, I think people are frightened. Even our colleagues are frightened to raise these issues. Unfortunately. So I just want to ask you, in your work, in your trust, whether you would consider how to meet the needs of the worst disadvantage, because I am sure, unless you're going to tell me otherwise, that this is the case also where in your region or your locality. So, We chose the internet purely because it was, for, for many reasons, but when you look on the uh, uh, dynamics of the families on um, Asian population and uh, black and ethnic minority, any minority groups, I'm not excluding myself from that for, again, the, the, the same reason I have different expectations from the NHS uh, and I will have different luggage. Um, but we have to take under consideration that we are, we are looking after the mother, but the family is looking at us. So we have to address the issue as deep as possible. That was one of the reasons why I decided to use the internet. That was that's, uh, the one of the reasons why I decided to translate the, um, the videos first in Urdu. It was because the majority of the population is fluent in Urdu. So instead of talking only to the mother, we are hoping very much that the information will get to the mother-in-law, the auntie, the husband, and so on. Because as I said again, we, we want to make the change, but we have to give the women the choice, the decision to make that change. Okay, so I just want to invite you then to connect with us if you need support to well, do that. My pleasure. But also the audience, if you'd like to get in touch with us to find out what it is we're doing and how you can help us to move forward, particularly for women of African descent. Our email contact details are Soac midwives at gmail.com. S O A C midwives at gmail.com. We would welcome working with you to do that. It will be Thank my you. pleasure. Thank you very much for listening once again.